Kaili Kumalo is uh, currently standing by uh, for us, where, of course, uh, former Minister of International Relations, Dr. M uh, Naledi Pando, is said to deliver a keynote address at the uh, uh, Matthew Goniwe Lecture in Melrose Arts. So, Kaya, a very good afternoon to you. Earlier when we spoke, the lecture hadn't uh, begun at this stage. You were saying and hoping for three o'clock. Have the proceedings started at this stage? Well, certainly, Alicia, quite a very exciting time here in Johannesburg. So it's all about celebrating the legacy of Matthew Goniwa. So I can tell you this much. Uh, the attendees uh, have started to arrive here at the venue in Melrose. So there is a great deal of excitement. But also, it's also about reflecting on the 30 years of the role uh, played by education in South Africa. As you know, that uh, Matthew Goniwa was a qualified teacher, a political activist, but also a name that is really ashed in the memories of South Africans when you talk about the Craddock Four. But uh, let's see now from the chairperson of the board here with us. Of course, uh, Mr. Ledimo, a very important day once again, as you know that it's about preserving this important legacy. Indeed, uh, thank you very much. It's a very important day for us. We are marking 30 years, 30 years of transforming education in our country. Our institution carries a very important name in the history of the liberation struggle of our country, Matthew Goniwe, who was a teacher. And as you would know, our core business is teacher training, SGB training, training district officials, training RCLs, and to always deem it fit. To set aside a moment to reflect on the role that we play in relation to the values that Matthew Goniwe carried as a teacher, a prolific maths and science teacher, whose values we try to emulate as an institution, was a very dedicated teacher, highly professional, revolutionary, highly, highly committed to the cause of developing learners, but also developing the community in which he lived. So it's always important to set aside time so that we make sure that the legacy of this uh, unsung hero of our struggle, Matthew Goniwe, lives on. Mm. And I would imagine, uh, Chair, that it's such a very important time where we've seen the reopening of the inquest so that we see closure for the family that, that is still yearning for the truth. Indeed, I'm very sure that the family will be happy about finding closure to this thing. There has always been gaps about uh, who are the perpetrators and uh, who are they They must be found and be brought to book. And I'm certain that the inquest will bring closure to the family on this particular matter. We'll be happy to see that this matter is brought to its logical conclusion. All right, so Chair, we're going to leave it for the time as uh, the proceedings will start. Uh, but Alicia, uh, the family is here. Nyanisa is here with us. We're, we're just going to have a reaction or two from him. Uh, a very important day for the family. Uh, Nyanisa, share with us. I mean, uh, how's the family feeling about today, especially given the fact that it's all about preserving uh, Matthew Goniwa's legacy? The family feels good about the whole celebration because... Uh, as a family, we certainly lost Matthew, not only Matthew, uh, we've lost my dear mother and uh, recently my sister. So this celebration of education is a big ordeal for not only uh, the Craddock community, the surrounding communities of Craddock, also Gauteng and the uh, larger South Africa uh, at large. So. Mm. You know, so before I let you go, uh, the reopening of the inquest, I would imagine that the family is still yearning to find out the truth, uh, given the very brutality of how Matthew and his uh, comrades and his com contemporaries, they were killed in an utterly heinous way. Uh, is the family just looking forward and finding out finally? Uh, unfortunately, uh, most, not all the perpetrators are dead by now. But um, I think it's just about closure and um, just finding out who else might have been involved. Um, just that and just bring it uh, just to an end and uh, let the families know um, that South Africa cares about them and cares about the result. Before I let you go, Nyanis, so any particular memories of uh, Mr. Matthew Goniwa as a child? I'm sure you were terribly young. I was very young, but I'm told that he used to take me everywhere and uh, in his car, the Honda. And if he didn't, obviously, I would cry my eyes out. But oh. uh, I remember, uh, and then he used to put me on his shoulders the whole time. So mm. I remember those fond memories.
Oh, indeed. Uh, thank you so much, uh, you. so much, Yanis. So, so, Alicia, of course, uh, that's uh, of course one of the family members here. As you know, that uh, of course, uh, former South Africa's international relations and cooperation minister, Dr. Naleda Pand, is going to deliver that lecture. So everyone is waiting with bated breath just to hear what she will say, especially around issues of education, but also reflecting on other geopolitical issues. As you know, that there is a, a conflict in the Middle East. Dr. Panda has been very vocal about uh, those atrocities, about the human rights uh, violations, and also by the very same token, uh, Mr. Matthew Gonier was uh, a stalwart, uh, somebody who really fought against injustice. Uh, so we can just imagine that there's going to be a, a comprehensive details uh, around all these topical issues. So we will certainly keep you posted. We do understand the lecture will kick off around 4 p.m. All right, that is uh, SABC News reporter Kailile Kumalo at Melbourne's Arch for us. And uh, of course, that uh, Matthew Goniwe lecture that still hasn't started yet. We're hoping now for four.